you truly believe that creativity can be taught. Yeah. And there's a lot of people well, out you there. you set it up. Okay. I mean, people are creative. And what you're doing is you're setting the environment up for them to get into themselves. So it's basically that everybody has kind of a core of creativity yeah. within their brain, but because they never set up the right environment, right, right. nobody's ever, nobody's ever going to do it. So let's talk about what is that environment? What is a good environment? I mean, you talk, you see Google with the with the sleep pods, yeah, yeah. you know, or a massage therapist or something. But it, you know, the stereotypical thing is that I'm in the shower and voila, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes. Uh -huh. yeah. So what are these environments? Well, nobody can interrupt you. Nobody's coming in. You're in isolation, and you can think. And, and that, is, it, is it free think though? You're not actually really thinking about the problem. Right, it's free thinking. And you have this association. It's like going to sleep at night. You know, your hemisphere is just sort of mixed. Everything comes up. And I think it was F. Scott Fitzgerald. What makes a really creative genius is a mind that can hold two just position of ideas at the same time. Without, you know, you know, mm -hmm. the, you yeah. accept both of them. Makes sense. And then you figure out maybe how, how to blend together. them up eventually. Yeah. Minolta has soundproof chambers uh, for their scientists. When you're coming up with an idea and you go into a set of flow, the last thing you want is somebody to come and walk up behind you, slap you on the shoulder and say, what about Monday night football? Yep. And you're, you're broken out of it. So, you know, like if you're in uh, a place where there's a lot of people, if you put on earmuffs, even though they don't have to be wired to anything, the wire could be there, but not, no sound. The last one that they will uh, pick on as they come in the room is the person that has the earbuds on, and so they don't want to. They feel yeah. like they're disturbing them, right? Yeah, the students yeah. study late at night by themselves because nobody will bother them. Nobody will bother them, right? But Rodney, it, se it seems to me that we live in the absolute worst environment now for not getting interrupted with, with right. the uh, smartphone, right? And so, how do you how do you turn it off? How do you isolate? How do you let and how do you let stuff percolate? You just have to turn it off. <laughs> it's amazing. It does have an off button, right? Or do not right, disturb, right, but we right. just choose not to do that. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you can just get away from that, yes, you're way better off. So should you kind of try to uh, apply yourself to the problem and then step back, go do something else and not expect, oh, this right. is going to come right now. And don't define the problem. That's, That's you don't cool. want the, because it's like the coffee cup. If you say coffee, they're going to design coffee cups. Oh, so, right. you know, there's a, like, um, the good example is 3M, you know, and post-it notes, which it was never designed to be post-it notes. That's right. And, That's right. you know, somebody said, hey, we can use this for this and this. Mm -hmm. And they probably sell a zillion. 3M has a policy that I think it's every uh, four years, a fifth of all their products have to be new. That's a brilliant. So they have to brilliant. invent Mm -hmm. and come up with new products. Yeah. Plus, they require that all of their employees bill 10% of their time to daydreaming. That's brilliant. And yeah. so, how, you know, how long a process is that? Is it a few minutes to get into that space? Is it, I gotta leave my desk, go outside, what? Uh... It, it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. um, Samuel Adams uh, used a purring cat, a uh, cup of tea, and he would do that, and then it would pop into his head. Uh, I don't get blocked anymore, but if I did and I was trying to come up with something, I would listen to some 18th century music, you know, and drink five cups of tea as I wander around the house, and then I can just sit down and come up. Mozart would take long walks in the woods, and then he'd be listening to the babbling brook. He'd see 50 different shades of green coming through a tree. He could feel the breeze, smell the odors then he could sit down and That's actually amazing. write a piece when he got back. Beethoven had to hammer around for months to come up with a piece. So it's, you know, different. It all depends on the individual. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know with me, I, it's a whiteboard. I get in front of yeah. a whiteboard yeah. and just start drawing stuff out, right. Right? right? You know, whether it's graphically or whether it's word word right. maps or outlines or whatever, you know, yeah. you just you get out there and you, we just start, Robert and I just start talking about, stuff right and here it comes right yeah and you know back to writing and journalism and for television uh you know the thing that i, that I, I what you 
what I thought would kill you is if you just sat and thought about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you just need to start. Yeah. And you got that first draft, and then I would walk away from in a document. You'd walk away right. from the first draft, right? And then have a different view when you came back. Yeah. Is that a yeah very good valid? Sure. Yeah. The more you can distance yourself and see things in a new eye. Well, I think the other thing we've learned too in business and talking to our clients is is you always have to be ready. Not necessarily in your full-fledged flow, but you never know when that's going to pop in your mind. So yeah. be ready. So the old, I had a professor one time tell me, because sometimes my brain starts going in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. he's put a notebook in a piece that's of paper, good. you yeah. know, a pen and a paper yeah. beside and just write down whatever it is that's got your that's mind good. going. That's good. You know, so things like that, because you yeah. never know. Sure. Uh, and then we're in social media and we're working with clients and they're trying to tell their story. You never know when that moment of your story is going to occur either. So you got to be you got to be kind of ready. Right. All right. So do you you want to know more? You want to do you want a part three? <laughs> Give us a teaser. What where do we go next? Oh no. This? Well, like you're talking about writing. Um, uh, Kipling used to write with blue ink, and they his assistant ran out of it and ran and got him some black ink, and he was going like ah, but he had a zillion ideas, so he started writing, and a thousand ideas came out, and he decided. He wouldn't write again unless he had black ink. <laughs> you know, it was a, like a post-hypnotic suggestion. Okay, hold that thought, black ink. Go grab your black pens. <laughs> Part three. <laughs>